In this video, we are going to discuss the liquidity ratios, which is the first category of indicators to analyze the financial statements of a company. The liquidity ratios help us understand the short term financial position. Short term refers to a one year period and we are going to learn to gauge the ability of a company to pay off its short term dues. The first indicator under this category, the first category is current ratio. The word current is not new to you. The current assets, current liabilities, the word has been used in those two terms. Uh, and the word refers to uh, less than one year. Current assets are the assets which are expected to be converted in cash in less than one year. And current liabilities are the liabilities which are to be paid within next one year. So the current ratio then would dictate that you make use of the current assets and current liabilities to come, some, uh, to come to some kind of understanding. So what kind of understanding are we expecting to arrive at? So if the current assets, if the current assets of business are, uh, let's say 100, the current liabilities of a business are 50 that means that the business uh, this company will have to pay 50 out of the 100 that it will recover in the next one year so current assets mean you will have this much cash in the next one year and current liabilities mean that you'll have to pay this much cash so for you know as per these numbers you will have double uh, the liabilities you'll have cash equal to double the liabilities current assets are uh, double of the current liabilities so we can divide these numbers and come to a 2 by 1 ratio so current ratio is 2 by 1 or 2 is to 1 this current ratio means that current assets are 2 times the current liabilities even if some of the current assets fail to convert themselves into cash you will still have the money to pay the current liabilities, right? So you have a good cushion. You have, you can forego 50% of your current assets. You can fail to recover 50% of your current assets and still be able to pay off your current liabilities. This is what this ratio uh, indicates. And the higher this ratio, you know, better it is for the business because more cushion uh, is available for the business. However, if you have too high a ratio, say for example, you have a thousand as the current assets and on the other hand, current liabilities are only hundred. So you have 10 is to <clears throat> 10 is to one ratio, which means you have too many current assets and too less current liabilities. Now, business is not only about having assets and not liabilities. Assets and liabilities are, you know, two sides of the same coin. The current liabilities essentially mean uh, that you have creditors which means your supplier is giving you the credit period and if you have two less current liabilities that means uh, you're not able to uh, get good terms from your supplier so a very high ratio may not always be good either so what you need to do is you need to look at industry standards what are my competitors doing what is the current ratio for my competitors and accordingly take a decision come to a conclusion as to this ratio is too high or too low or you know it's it's uh, uh, you know com comparable to the industry standard so that's how you calculate the current ratio and interpret the current ratio now current assets and current liabilities uh, i think we are aware of those the typical terms that you will see in the current assets will include cash will include the bank balance, you will have your debtors, you will have prepaid expenses, uh, you may have any short term investments that you've done, I'm referring to the company when I say you, plus uh, you can have stock, so unsold stock is another uh, asset that you can have.
there can be some other items in the current assets which may we may have missed but uh, uh, the list can go long it can vary depending upon the nature of the company these are some typical items current liabilities as we know will have the creditors you can have short term loans that you have taken any other advances that you have taken there can be bills which are payable there can be outstanding expenses so all the items that we have seen in the balance sheet on the current liabilities uh, head so just use the sum of these two for a given uh, financial year so that's important to know the current ratio is calculated for a financial uh, period so at the end of the uh, financial year uh, pick up the total of the current assets and current liabilities from the balance sheet of course and then figure out this number now there is a theoretical thumb rule so to say the thumb rule and again uh, i say theoretical thumb rule is 2 is to 1 uh, thumb rule means if you have a current ratio of 2 is to 1 then you know that's the ideal uh, ratio however that's on that's that's what you read in the textbooks but it varies according to the industry are you in manufacturing industry are you in uh, renewable energy are you part of the you know do you have a healthcare business depending upon that you look at the industry industry means the competitors what is it that the other players in the market are maintaining what is that ratio and you compare to that so this is the first type of ratio which helps us understand the short term financial position of the business let's go to a second indicator which is called liquid ratio also called quick ratio or asset test ratio now the purpose of this uh, second indicator is to be more stringent more stringent compared to what compared to current ratio current ratio takes into account all current assets to pay all current liabilities now we will have to pay all current liabilities for sure however it is possible it is possible that in order to pay all the current liabilities we may not be able to get all the current assets converted into cash let me go back to the previous slide and look at these uh, the contents of uh, current assets so you have cash and bank which are you know 100% certain you have those with you unless there is a fire or you know there is a theft so cash and bank is something which is sure shot with you uh, debtors again when you show debtors in the balance sheet you adjust these debtors for any bad debts that could possibly be there so you create provisions adjust this number and show a toned down number uh, for debtors again this is very likely that you will receive this money the prepaid expenses are something that you have already paid and in future you will not have to pay However, it is not going to bring in any cash into the business and what we are interested in is the cash which will be used to pay off the current liabilities. So these prepaid expenses, uh, we will just put a small cross at the top of it because uh, it is not bringing in cash for the business. Then you have short term investment which you could sell in the market, short term investments uh, you know mean that you could you have invested money in the stock market for example you can sell off and on this on the next day you can get the check get the money in your bank account so these are also also highly likely to be recovered at any point uh, at which it is required and then you have the closing stock unsold stock now the stock is with you and you expect to sell it but you expected to sell it in the last year as well and it is still unsold so the stock is considered to be another highly unlikely item which is which may or may not bring in cash which may still remain unsold at the end of next year so uh, i'm again putting a small cross at the top of it so out of these items prepaid expenses and unsold stock are going to either not bring any cash into the company or uh, are very uh, less likely to bring in very highly uncertain to bring in cash into the business so instead of using all the current assets we are going to take out the prepaid expenses 
and the stock. So stock and prepaid expenses are taken out of the current assets and now you have a new definition of current assets. Uh, the, the, now they are actually not current assets since you take out two components of the current assets. This new, uh, uh, this new term is called liquid assets. So the liquid asset means they can be converted into cash with a higher probability compared to the prepaid expenses and the stock. So uh, using uh, you know that as the basis, now we say how much of the current liabilities am I going to uh, be able to pay. So if uh, previously we had 100 as the current asset and let's say 10 plus 20 comes out to be the uh, prepaid expenses in stock, can I pay off my 50 rupees of liabilities? Well, yes, you can. You have a 70 by 50 ratio. It's not two, two is to one, but it's more than, uh, you know, one is to uh, one is to one. So you have a seven, seven by five, which comes out to be uh, 1.4 as the current ratio. So the liquid assets are 1.4 times. So liquid assets are equal to 1.4 times the current liabilities. So even if some of the current assets are not converted into cash, uh, we're not able to uh, realize the cash from the current assets, we will still have 1.4 times uh, the current liabilities. Our liquid assets will be sufficient to pay off the current liabilities. Uh, this is what liquid ratio means. It's really a more stringent test. We are saying, all right, there are some assets which are less likely to be converted into cash. Let's get rid of those and then come to a new category of assets called liquid assets. So uh, again, uh, is what is the thumb rule for that? Uh, theoretically, in the textbooks, you would see that the thumb rule for liquid ratio is one is to one. However, uh, it depends upon the industry, uh, you know, standards. It depends upon what your competitors, uh, what is the these, what are the ratios maintained by your competitors. Uh, so do not go by thumb rules or textbook rules, but rather look at the industry uh, where this company belongs that you're analyzing, and accordingly, uh, you know, do, do make a comment uh, on the liquidity position of the business. All right, that's the second uh, indicator of the short-term financial health of the business. Let's now go to a third indicator, which is called absolute liquid ratio. Uh, the premise again is to further refine the current assets and say, uh, why only stock and prepaid expenses? You have debtors, uh, you have other current assets which may not be converted into cash in the next one year. What happens then? So, uh, in order to just create that scenario, this is a third ratio wherein we say, let's look at only the current assets which are you know, guaranteed to be converted into the cash. So, we'll say cash balance, bank balance plus any marketable securities. Marketable securities are short term investments. These are sure shot, these are readily convertible uh, into cash. Uh, you know, in a, in a matter of hours or a day. And you divide this by current liabilities and there you have it. You can call this class of assets as absolute liquid assets and divide those by current liabilities. So all we are doing is making this test more difficult. Uh, that's it. So if let us say this comes out to be 50 over 50 and one is to one is the absolute liquid ratio. This means that despite, uh, you know, removing all the other assets, if we have to pay off our liabilities immediately, we will still have the cash bank balance and the marketable securities sufficient to meet those current liabilities. So current liabilities, the creditors should be, uh, should feel secured, uh, should feel that the company is in good short term financial position. Uh, with uh, even with the most stringent test, uh, they are able to, they will be able to pay off their uh, current liabilities in the short run. So uh, from the current uh, ratio to liquid ratio to absolute liquid ratio, we are increasing the difficulty level. The uh, level of test is going up for the business. So in the short term, you could look at these three types of assets, absolute liquid assets. 
divide them by the same denominator which is current liability and these three indicators uh, will help you understand the short term financial position of the company. Alright, so to summarize, uh, we wanted to discuss, we wanted to look at the indicators which will help us uh, gauge the short term financial position and these are the three indicators. In the next video, we are going to look at uh, some uh, practice problems, some tutorials uh, where we can make use of these uh, ratios. So I'll see you in the next video.